there appears to be a shift in addition to what was once considered the two basic types of learners, auditory and visual, to a new paradigm of learner made up of supervisual learners. This new type of learner not only needs to see it and do it as does the standard visual learner, but also needs to be immersed in the learning through visual storytelling and or simulations or computer generated instruction. My presentation starts out with a short history of educational presentations. Initially, there was a lecture. This was necessitated by the fact that there was no way to show a group of people any kind of substance simultaneously. There were not even blackboards, which made their first appearance in Scotland in the early 1800s. Blackboards made their debut in America circa 1850 in military schools. Prior to that, students had their own slates, and the teacher had to go student to student to write the problem in the student's slate so they could solve it. This is very time-consuming and limited the number of students that could be in a classroom. Then came overheads. After blackboards became profuse, the first electrical, not electronic, device was the overhead projector. The main benefits of the projector was that transparencies could be made in advance and they could be stored and used again and again. The plastic could also be printed on a laser printer and then written on with markers that can be washed off and reused. Then came slideshows. Presentation software started with Aldous Persuasion, a remarkable program in the 1980s that allowed teachers to create slides similar to overhead transparencies, but that could easily be modified and reorganized. This type of software can also print out notes and handouts for the students. Current presentation software can also include graphics, audio, and video, and can be exported into a movie format for inclusion on a website or a DVD. Change not only your life around, but your kids and your grandkids and make a change in their lives. This is Rich Dad's Guide to Investing. This is a great book. Now, before I read this book, I always just assumed that if you had some money, you can invest it in anything that you want. That is not true. There are federal laws. Next came smart boards. Relatively new technology with a lot of competition, smart boards promise all the features of presentation software plus live video from a computer. For example, live website viewing for a group. Smart boards are also interactive in that presentations can actually be modified on the board. Objects moved, resized, grouped, and categorized. Anything on the board can also be captured into the computer for display on websites like Blackboard or Moodle so students can review or catch up on missed lessons. The definition of government, okay? It is the institution through which government it's public policy. All right, now what is public policy? Okay, does anybody have any idea what it might be? Then came online courses. With online courses like Full Sail, there is no physical classroom. Students and teacher meet at an agreed upon time, but they can be physically anywhere in the world. The presenter can introduce any type of media into the class, video, audio, graphics, websites, and live cams, and the students can do the same. The students can also interact with each other and the instructor during lessons through the choice of chat box, microphone, and or video. Students and the presenter can verify and expand on content through web access and sharing of URLs through during class. This is the beginning of true content collaboration. Once it's a set piece, then it can be copyrighted. But just the moves themselves, a the specific kind of move, cannot be core, uh, cannot be um, cannot be copyrighted. Okay, so the copyright duration, who wants to guess what the original, I don't know if I have it in our notes here, the original copyright from the Founding Fathers up until the beginning of the last century was how long? Who wants to venture a guess? Immersion for the supervisual learner. Although I'm showing Second Life, which is currently popular, when I think of total immersion, I relate more to the scenes in Lawnmower Man when the participants were not only active mentally but physically strapped into the simulation with what, was, what they were viewing through their helmets. Do you remember how Matrix started? This is the ultimate immersion. The entire population thinks they are living in a real world with real people, jobs, and cities, but it's all a simulation. In reality, they are all in pods connected through their nervous systems. 
In this form, there is no distinguishing between reality and fantasy. You can go anywhere, do anything, and there's no way to tell what is real and what is not. Where am I going from here? This new breed of student needs more immersion in the content than just reading a book or attending a lecture. But there is no funding or even the technology to bring us up to where we need to be. The implementation of my project will start teachers on a path of creating stimulating visual media and collaborative websites to capture student interest. Before we can start thinking about even basic game type immersions like Second Life, we need to bring all teachers up to speed on the current state of technology that they can use in their classrooms. Assuming that every classroom has a computer and a projector, which may not be true but is more doable than any other option, we need to train teachers how to create good presentations. No more copying pages from books and putting them on an overhead. No more slides with four or five paragraphs of 12 point text. No more green slides with red text or vice versa in classes that have male students. No more collages of stuff that make it difficult to determine precisely what the slide is supposed to be about. And no more wild and crazy transitions that detract from the message. This may sound like going backwards, but in reality, we need to walk before we can run. We need to run before we can fly. And in many of our educational institutions, we are barely crawling.